Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh, my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh, all pervading personality of God. Oh, all pervading personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. <clears throat> it is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahman. The original living being. The original living By him, being. even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into As illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered by the illusory of representation. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes appear of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. And therefore unreal. meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. And therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material which, world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitabhutra. Dharma Projita Kaitabhutra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamani krite. Shimad bhagavate mahamani krite. Kimva parir ishvara. Kimva parir ishvara. Sadyo hridi aburudhya te tra. Sadyo hridi aburudhya te tra. Kriti bihi susu sabistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. <clears throat> the highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth that really distinguishes from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears message about them. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapatarur galitam phalam. Nigama kapatarur galitam phalam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyitam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyitam. Vivata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Vivata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho raska bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although the nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrinvatam Svakata Krishna. Shrinvatam Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantak Stohi Bhadrani. Vidyantak Stohi Bhadrani. Vidu Nati Suhit Satam. Vidu Nati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly from Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? Is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. 
acts as the best wishing friend. And friends. purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preshu bhadeshu. Nasta preshu bhadeshu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati bhavati naistaki. Bhagavati bhavati naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally devotes his dormant transcendental knowledge. He was not, he was not. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo bhadayas che. Kamalo bhadayas che. itar. Navidam, Chita Itar Navidam, Sitam Satve Prasidati, Sitam Satve Prasidati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes free from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. And this material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha sujayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Remains steady in position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the signs of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante chasya karmani. Drista evat manishwari. Evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And never to come at once to the stage of some shares of Magraman. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna from uh, uh, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. From Krishna from his devotees in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse Number 17. Tana param punyam asam vritatam. Tana param punyam asam vritatam. Akyanam atyad bhuta yoga nishtam akya namatyad bhuta yoga nishtam akya hi ananta charito papanam akya hi ananta charito papanam parikshitam bhagavata biramam parikshitam bhagavata biramam Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Thus, please narrate to us the, na the narrations of the unlimited, for they are purifying and supreme. They were spoken to Maharaj Prikshit, and they are very dear to the pure devotees, being full of bhakti yoga. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. What was spoken to Maharaj Prikshit and what is very dear to pure devotees is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is mainly full of the narrations, of the activities of the Supreme Unlimited, and therefore it is the science of Bhakti Yoga or the devotional service of the Lord. Thus it is para or supreme, because although it is, it is enriched with all knowledge and religion, it is specifically enriched with devotional service of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. 
So the glories of the Srimad Bhagavatam are unlimited. Why? Because it is scientific fact. Now this is hard to understand <laughs> for most people because they think religion has nothing to do with science. But actually, pure spirituality as explained in Srimad Bhagavatam has, is scientific. What does it mean, science or scientific? It means that something is verifiable everywhere. That's science. So, Prabhupada proved that Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita is scientific because he went around the world 14 times and made devotees in every country or in every continent. That's science. The same thing is true everywhere doesn't matter whether it's white, black, yellow, green, blue, whatever color they might, their skin may be, whatever country they're born in, whatever language they speak, whatever food they ate, eat, doesn't matter. If they take up chanting Hare Krishna and accept initiation from bona fide Shikshan and Diksha gurus, they can attain all the supreme destination, Param Dhamma, the eternal world, free of birth, death, old age, and disease. That's science. It's true everywhere, not only on the earth, but everywhere in the whole universe. Narada Muni goes everywhere in the whole universe, from the highest planets down to the lowest planets, and makes devotees. So it's not only valid everywhere in the material world, the planets that we live on, it's, it's, it's valid on every planet of the universe. So that's real science. Science means that something is verified and always true everywhere. That's real science. So there's a nice verse uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Kechit Kevalaya Bhaktya Vasudeva Parayana Agam Dunvanti Karchneya Niharam Iva Bhaksharam Bhaskara Iharam Iha Bhaskara. This says that when the sun rises, the all pervading fog immediately disappears. So in this Kali Yuga, by the process of bhakti yoga, especially by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, all one's sins are eradicated and one becomes fully reformed. In other words, one comes to the spiritual platform and that is the success of life. Very important verse 6, 1, 15. So, this is what Srimad Bhagavatam is all about. And this is what the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is all about. One becomes purified of what? Of the materialistic way of life, of material desires and of previous karma and, or fate. And one becoming purified of all these things begins to assimilate transcendental knowledge and eventually love of Krishna and then they're liberated even in this world because everything they do from that point on is devotional service they don't perform any type of karmic activity that has a material benefit or a material downside uh, they're not interested in material benefit and they're not subject to uh, to sinful reactions because they're not committing sins. Okay? So, therefore, they're in the liberated state in this world and in the spiritual world. Like Narada Muni, he's eternally liberated. Uh, an eternally liberated person is very light. They don't have any heavy thoughts about sense gratification or making a profit, anything like that. They're only interested in helping people become Krishna conscious so that everyone can go back to Godhead. They're not interested in their own salvation. Just like Ramanujacharya, he, 
he wanted to get a mantra from one, one of his gurus. And he uh, begged for this mantra because he knew that anyone who repeats this mantra will go back to Godhead. So his guru, before he gave that mantra to him, he said, you have to promise me not to tell anybody else. This is just between us, you and me. And he promised. And as soon as he got the mantra, uh, Om Namo Narayanaya Namaha, that was the mantra. He immediately went to a public square and he called everyone to come and he gave them all the mantra. So, when the, his guru heard about that, he called him and said, what kind of nonsense is this? You just promised me not to give the mantra to anyone. He said, yes, Guru Dave, it's true. I, I admit I, I did that. He said, okay, well, what, why, why did you do it? He said, well, this, you said this mantra is so powerful that anyone who repeats it, they go back to Godhead. So I said, let everybody go back to Godhead. I can go to hell. And the Guru was shocked. And he got off the Vyastan and surrendered to Ramanujacharya. <laughs> because he's a real guru, right? He's not interested in his own salvation. He's interested in helping everyone else go back to God, even if he has to go to hell. <clears throat> so, today, uh, as part of this verse and purport, uh, sometimes people come up to me and say, oh, Prabhu, pro Please, Asurbat, please give us your blessing. Well, today I'm going to give you all the blessing, the top blessing that we, anyone can get. It's called Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So Srila Prabhupada explains Lord Chaitanya's blessing, the greatest blessing that could ever happen to anyone in this age of Kali. It's called cleansing the heart. Just like you have these bogus yogis who do a chakra cleaning. It costs, I think it costs a couple hundred dollars to get your chakras clean. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good business. They always think of these ways of making a lot of money. You know? So there's chakra cleaning. But the real cleaning is cleaning the heart. And Lord Chaitanya says uh, that Cheta Darpana Marjanam. What does that mean? It means that there are progressive benefits in chanting Hare Krishna. The beginning is cleansing of the heart because of all impurities on account of dirty things within the heart that are accumulated over many lifetimes. One, uh, because one is living in the animalistic type of life. So what is the animalistic type of life? Only eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. That's an animal. It can be a two-legged animal, a three-legged animal, four-legged animal, ten-legged animal. It's still animal life. Eating, their, their only interest is eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So... In order to elevate oneself from being an animal, one must perform what's called tapasya, voluntarily accepting uh, discomfort in order to make spiritual advancement. So uh, this cleansing of the heart begins when we accept tapasya. And what is the tapasya? Well, it's what we promise at the moment of initiation. Or if a new person comes and they want to stay in the temple, they have to promise to follow four rules and regulations and chant Hare Krishna. Right? So there's the yamas and niyamas, things you should not do and things you should do. So things you should not do, eat meat, gamble or speculate, intoxicate or have illicit connections. And what are the four things you should do? You should chant Hare Krishna. You should attend classes regularly. 
and read the scriptures and repeat them and preach to others. Right? You should eat only prasadam. And you should regularly engage in acts of devotional service under the, under the guidance of bona fide Siksha and Diksha Gurus. If you do these things, then that is tapasya. You know, like, for example, uh, for someone who's addicted to sense gratification, if you ask them to give up illicit connections, give up intoxication, say, oh my God, oh, if I do that, I may as well commit suicide. That's the only thing that gives me pleasure in life, you see? So it's a big tapasya. It's not something easy for people who are addicted to animalistic life, right? However, this type of tapasya is actually pleasant and, and, and enjoyable, uh, just like if someone has joined this, they say, I'm not sure about it myself, but they say that the cure for it is rock candy. And in the beginning, the taste of the rock candy is bad because of the jaundice. The jaundice is, let's say you, you go to India and you buy a bottle of Bisleri water, right? But actually, the, the shop owner cheated. It's an old bottle of Bisleri, and he just put it in the tap of the of the uh, stool-like water in Delhi, <laughs> he closed the cap, and he's selling it a little bit cheaper than you can get it somewhere else. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's contaminated water, right? And you drink that contaminated water, thinking it's pure water, because it says Bisleri, and uh, what happens? By the time you get back to the United States, you have jaundice. <laughs> you feel terrible, you feel like crap. You can't eat. You have, you, 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 you feel horrible, and your body is just, uh, you know, completely out of control, and everything is tasteless. But if you start taking some sugar candy, little by little, in the beginning, the sugar candy doesn't taste good, but as you become cured, you taste the real taste of the sugar candy. It becomes sweet again. It becomes pleasant. So that's Krishna consciousness. It may begin like poison, but it ends up like nectar. And material life, it begins like nectar and ends up like poison. There's a big difference. So this Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, this cleansing process, begins when we accept to be, to, to ex accept this actually enjoyable tapasya. In the beginning, it might not seem enjoyable, but as you continue and become purified, it becomes nectarine. Therefore, in the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita is a nice verse that says that someone who takes to this process, they can taste nectar even in this lifetime. It's in the 15th chapter where it says, hmm, how do I find it? Uh, It says, uh, anyway, again, I'll, I'll find it later on. Okay, so uh, this, uh, uh, the fact that one begins the process of Krishna consciousness and, pro and engages in this enjoyable tapasya, what happens? That gradually, Maya's grip on us weakens. And we begin to understand that I'm not this body. I was convinced that I was this body. But now I'm convinced I'm not this body. I'm different than this body. And actually, my body is being forced to do things. Although I think I'm doing them, actually it's not true. I'm being forced to do them because my real body is my spiritual body, my eternal body. And that doesn't have to eat, it doesn't have to sleep, it doesn't have to mate, and it doesn't have to defend. So everything I'm doing is based on eating, sleeping, mating, and defending while I'm in Maya. But actually, my real nature is not to do these things. It's simply to enjoy. Enjoy in the company of Krishna as his eternal servant 
and giving him pleasure because I'm part and parcel of Krishna. If he's pleased, then I'm also pleased. You see. So, just like when the tide goes up, all the boats go up with it. So, when Krishna consciousness becomes more and more intense, then not only I am feeling happy, of course Krishna is happy because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do is to please him, but everybody else also feels happy. See? Like for example, let's say you go out on the food truck and you get everything set up to serve and then people are waiting and then you start serving and you notice, oh my God, the halva looks really good. <laughs> and I can smell it. I can smell the ghee in it. In fact, there's extra ghee on top. You know, whoever made this really put uh, a lot of ghee in it. You know, and it smells great. And it has the berries, and it's purple. When we went to uh, Tacoma for the first time, <laughs> there's this lady uh, there. It's a nice lady, but she's really big, like this, right? and. I asked her, do you want a plate of, uh, uh, of the food? And she said, uh, can I see it first? I said, sure. So I opened up the, uh, uh, the takeout box, you know, and, and then, you know, there's, there's the rice and there's the dal and there's the sabji. Right away she said, what's that purple thing? I said, well, that's a sweet. I want that. I mean, she was like, zeroed in on it. It's like an eagle is going to catch a rabbit or something. It's zeroed right in on it. And now every time she goes back, she says, you got that purple stuff? I say, yes. She says, Please give me a lot of it. <laughs> she like, you know, it was like she had been waiting many lifetimes for it, you know. <laughs> so one begins to understand, you know, now I am engaged only in seeking these bodily comforts of life. These are not at all necessary. You start realizing these. These are not, these, what I think is necessary is not actually necessary, right? That's not essential. Today, since I am in an American body, I think I have so many duties as an American man. Tomorrow, I may be an American dog body, and immediately my duty would change. So I can understand that these bodily concerns are not my real business. My real business is how to elevate myself as a spirit soul to the spiritual world, back to home, back to Godhead. These are the realizations one gets as they advance in Krishna consciousness. So you're out on that, you're out in the truck and you see, wow, this halva looks really good and it smells good. I'm gonna put a little bit aside for me uh, after, after everybody else is fed, you know. And then you see the subji. You say, oh my God, look, it's, it's not that type of brown subji. That everything has its natural color. The green things are green. The red things are red. It smells good. I can, I can also smell the, the ghee in it. It looks right, really nice. You know, it's attractive. You know. And then there's the rice pulao that's yellow and it's got a few vegetables in it and it's got ghee in it also. And you say, oh, man, I can't wait. This, this whole thing is over so I can have a plate also. You know. And then uh, you see uh, the dal also is like yellowish and you can see the tomatoes in it and you can see a few other vegetables in it, and it's it's somewhat watery. And it, and you say, my, my God, you know, the prashadam today looks really good. So you're really enthusiastic to give it to the people. And then the roti comes in with ghee on it, you know, and it puffed up completely like that, you know. <laughs> and you say, wow, you know, everything's going great here. And then you give a plate to a person, you know, and they say, thank you very much, you know. And they go and they eat it. And the person's in line again, you know. And you come back and say, man, that was so good, you know. Whoever that cook is, tell them that uh, I'm blessing them, that they can keep doing this like this, you know. <laughs> and he takes, and he takes, and he said, can you give me three this time? Because, you know, I got a couple friends. I got to share this with them, you know. And, you know, 
you come back and you're happy as anything because they were happy, right? They were happy, and you say, my God, they cook, whoever that is. They did a fantastic, this is preaching. And every one of those people that you served that day, they're back the next time you're there. And they bring some friends because the prashadam is so damn good. They never tasted anything like that. And they can say, brother, I can feel the love. I feel it. <laughs> you see, that's preaching. That should be our standard. We shouldn't take any activity in Krishna consciousness for granted. Everything we do should be first class, not second, third, fourth class. It should be first class because we're first class, because we have realization of how important prasadam is, how important chanting the holy name is, how important it is to help all these people that are suffering, they're in ignorance, how important the Bhagavad Gita is, how important the Srimad Bhagavatam is. We have to have that determination that understanding to make everything first class. The temple has to be first class. The deity worship has to be first class. The prasadam has to be first class. All our techniques of cooking prasadam, all our techniques of distributing, all our behavior, all the way we say hello to people and say Hare Krishna and smile, all of these things have to be first class. If we do that, we will succeed in our preaching. And if we just take things, you know, so-so. Uh, oh, I don't feel so good today. Maybe, maybe I just burn the halva. What? You're going to burn the halva? That's not first class. You know? Or you, you don't really clean the spinach and some, some rotten spinach get, mixes in. Well, that's not first class. You know? So... We have to understand what it means to be Krishna conscious. It means everything should be first class. Everything should be Krishna conscious. Everything should be so good that people say, wow, I never expected these people to be so good. I gotta find out why they're like that. Everything they're doing is first class and it's making me happy. So, in this way, a person who chants Hare Krishna purifies his consciousness. Then his materialistic activity is stopped. Okay. That's this Cheta Dharpana we, Marga. We're, we're only talking about the first three words of the uh, prayers of uh, Lord Chaitanya, the six asakam. The first three words are so profound. What about the rest? You know, right? So, then this materialistic activity is stopped, and a person and the devotee knows this is sim this materialistic way of life is simply a waste of time. I must act spiritually all the time. That is knowledge, which comes from the basis of the bodily concept of life when it is overcome simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This is the first installment of benefit from chanting, okay? Because it says this Krishna consciousness and chanting Hare Krishna is progressive. It means that you progressively make spiritual advancement. And with that comes different types of uh, deeper and deeper understanding of the Hare Krishna mantra and Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And it's a kaleidoscopic Understanding. Look this word up, kaleidoscopic. It's a very important word. Do you know what a kaleidoscope is? Anybody know what a kaleidoscope is? What? Say, uh, say it. <laughs> this is good exercise when you come to the microphone. You know? <laughs> if you're a little sleepy, you wake up right away, you know, walking over here. Yeah, the kaleidoscope is where you uh, make a uh, construct with uh, mirrors, and then you throw different colored uh, either uh, pieces of objects or glass pieces and so on. And well, then what happens when you look into it? It, it has uh, um, a pattern that emerges that's. But don't you have an impression that it's 
Infinite? Yeah, it's, it's infinite because of the multiple reflection. Yeah, you look reflect into this thing, it's like a little box like that. You look into it, all of a sudden it looks like it's infinite. Correct, correct, right? correct. Yes. So that is the way the experience one has when one reads Bhagavad Gita in the company of genuine devotees. Hmm. It becomes kaleidoscopic. Every, every word has a whole uh, bunch of meaning. Is, would you agree with that, bro? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Is that your experience also? Yeah. Every word has, you know, un, un, unimaginable meanings. Every, mm. every, every letter of the word, every syllable of the word. It's just, it's just Actually, some of the words we speak like in English, when you see in, in, the, in the spiritual context, context, there's so many meanings. It's a deeper meaning even. You can more and more explore that the same words that we speak normally in English. Yeah. But when in connection with uh, Sanskrit. Sanskrit or uh, spiritual meaning, it goes deeper. Like the word engagement, you can explain in so many ways. How to be engaged in the, in, you know. Sometimes I, I tell people, what do you mean to be engaged? And people are like, oh, let me think about it. <laughs> it has many meanings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so spiritual is lim unlimited, right? Yes. Sorry. No, no, it's, it's good. So when you get that kaleidoscopic experience, reading in Bhagavatam and serving prasadam and whatever you're doing, worshiping the deities, chanting regularly Hare Krishna, this kaleidoscopic experience. Although the kaleidoscope is a little box like this, but when you look into it, it looks like it's infinite. You know, and there's infinite varieties going on in there. So, therefore, the illusion of wrongly working on the basis of the bodily concept of life is overcome simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This is the first installment of benefit from chanting. Okay? Then there's Baba Maha Devagni Nirvapanam. This means the process of stopping the blazing fire of material existence. What does that mean? And how do you? F what What is this blazing fire of material existence? Well, Lord Buddha once said, "My eyes are on fire, my lips are on fire, my nose is on fire, my ears are on fire, my skin is on fire, my hair is on fire, my whole body is on fire." And what is the fire? Lust. Kama esa krodha esa ragaguna samudbalam. So this lust is compared to fire, it's burning people, burning them for s get more sense gratification. And then as soon as one has sense gratification, it's not enough. I need more sense gratification. Just like I had a friend of mine, he was a devotee. And 1999, one day he and I were talking and he said, you know, my 401, my, my stock, uh, uh, what do you call that? My stock uh, uh, file or my portfolio. portfolio, my stock portfolio is at $2 million now. I said, wow, that's, <laughs> that's something. I said, why don't you just sell it? You can retire. And he thought about it for a minute. And then he said, it's not enough. He said it like that, right? It's not enough, right? I got scared when he said that. You know? <laughs> so I, I figured I better not say anything else to him. You know, he might, you know, smash me on the head or something. You know. So, in two thousand, when two thousand was almost finished and going into two thousand one. I saw him again. I said, how are you doing? He said, ah, not doing good at all. I said, what's the matter? He said, haven't you read? I said, read what? Uh, the Bhagavatam? He said, no, no, <laughs> I'm not talking about the Bhagavatam. The stock market. I, I said, well, I, I don't look at it that much. I don't have any stocks. He said, it's crashed. Oh, I said, oh, I saw. Well, I mean, are you hurt by it? So hurt? What do you mean hurt? Now I'm... $200,000 down. I said, what? 
you, you said your portfolio is $2 million. But the market crashed, don't you understand, idiot? Oh, I said, I don't know any much, much about it. <laughs> so he went from $2 million to minus $200,000. He had to sell his house. He had to uh, basically start all over again from zero, from minus zero. So I, I was thinking, should I say I told you so or not say it? <laughs> if he had listened to my advice in, 2000, in 1999, he would have retired the rest of his life, right? But he said it's not enough. That's the disease. That's called the material conceptualizing. Never enough. There's never enough sense gratification. There's never enough money. There's never enough houses. There's never enough cars. There's never enough this and there's never enough that. And people are not satisfied, no matter how much they have, you see. So, this is, but there's another fire. There's not just one fire, there's, there are different types of fire. Just like if you read a book about uh, how to perform pujas, well in that book it explains there's different types of fire, right? Well, there are different types of fire also. So in the fourth chapter, 19th verse, is a nice verse that says, Yasya sarve samaramba kama sankalpa varjitam varjita jnana agni dagdas karmanam tamahu panditam buddha. So this verse says, this verse, jnana agni dagda karmanam. It means, one is understood to be in full knowledge whose every endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by stages to be a worker for whom the reactions were, have been burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. That's what Bhagavatam is. That's what Bhagavad Gita is. It's the fire of perfect knowledge. It burns up all impurities, right? There are four other verses like this in the Bhagavad Gita, where it's talking about uh, this burning up. 4.36 also says, Apichet asipapibya sarbibya papa kritama. Sarvam jnana plavena eva virginam santarishyasi. It says, even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. So, sarve plavena jnana plavena eva means sitting on the boat of transcendental knowledge. And then it says, yatai dam si samido nir basmasat kurute. Regina. Janagni sarva karmana, karm, Janagni sarva karmani, basmasat kurute tata. As a blazing fire turns firewood to ashes, or Arjuna, so does the fire of knowledge burn to ashes all reactions to material activities. So there are different types of fire. So this reading Bhagavad Gita every day and Srimad Bhagavatam and discussing it, it burns up all desires for sense gratification. And Prabhupada says, that's what we want. That's what we're working for in Krishna consciousness, to get rid of all junk material desires and replace them with spiritual desires to please Krishna. That's the whole process right there. So, therefore, Baba, Devag, uh, Baba Mahadevagni Nirvapanam, it's stopping the blazing fire of material existence by stepping into the fire of pure knowledge transcendental knowledge. Just like when the firefighters are fighting a, a terrible fire, right, that's burning up thousands of acres, what do they do? They start another fire. Why, why would they start another fire? Because they burn up the fuel. So they, they figure out which way the wind is coming, which direction of the fire is progressing. They'll go ahead of the fire and start their own fire so that when the other fire reaches that point, it has nothing to burn. See? So one fire is used to eliminate another fire that's out of control. See? Hopefully they don't lose control of the second fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they do. 
Okay. So then the next one, Shaya Kairavya Chandrika Chandrika Vitaranam. One becomes complete every one's life becomes completely auspicious. All good things start happening because one has given up sinful activity. When you move into a temple, at least when I did, I had to give up sinful activity. And I was always being watched by somebody. Right? And that was good. And then when time goes by, let's say you've been following the rules and regulations for a month and chanting 16 rounds and all day long engaged in devotional service, you get purified very quickly. You, get, you, th you think, wow, this is a great way of life, you know? I don't have to work. All I do is chant, dance, feast, and the feasting is getting better and better. And, uh, and I'm hearing Bhagavad Gita, and I'm learning things I never understood before. Wow, this is great. You see? So one's life becomes auspicious. Vidya vadunam jivanam. Vidya vadu jivanam. He becomes filled with transcendental knowledge. And then anandam buddhi vardhanam one begins to experience an ocean of transcendental bliss, and it keeps increasing. And then, purnam ritas vadanam, one tastes the nectar of Krishna consciousness at, in every step of life. And then, one's life becomes totally blissful. And finally, sarvatma snapanam param vijayate shi krishna sankirtanam, all glories to the sankirtan movement, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So this is Lord Chaitanya's gift. This is his blessing, right? And you can give the same blessing to others. It's not complicated. Very simple. We repeat, repeat it every day. Chaita Dharpana Marjana Baba Mahadavagni Narvakman. We repeat it every day. And we also repeat and the, uh, the meaning of it. So, but the meaning of it is very, very profound. So I wanted to go over it again today. So then, simply by following this process of Krishna consciousness, you get the benefit of all types of rituals, Vedic rituals, austerity, penances, mystic yoga, and so on. It's totally achieved simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You don't have to do any of those other things. You see someone and say, oh, yeah, I'm doing a Kriya Yoga. Man, it's really hard, you know. i got to uh, meditate at least 18 hours a day now. And, uh, but I'm going to get to the Kriya. That's a bunch of nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. you, get, you, you, you go way past Kriya Yoga and Jnana Yoga and Astanga Yoga you, because simply by chanting Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra is purely, you surpass all those yogas. You get the benefit of all those yogas and you surpass them. See? That's what Krishna consciousness is. So I'll stop right there. Are there any questions? I just have a comment, Maharaj. Yeah. Good, you, you mentioned that subject about, it's called tele, telis, tele, telescope. Telescope, yeah. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope, okay. <laughs> <laughs> never heard it before. <laughs> you never heard of that before? Oh, we got. We let's let's buy one. And let him see it. They don't call it. Huh? Bring it. Bring it. Let probably see it. <laughs> so, yeah, you see, like in in the spiritual, uh, the meanings, you know, of any any everything in the spiritual sense is very deep. Like you explain about the uh, the yagya, you know, there are actually seven flames. Yeah. In Different that, in types of verse. fires. Yeah, it, 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 uh, but when I heard it, wow, fascinating. And love, we just said love in English. Uh, millions of types of love. <laughs> you go from snaya, mana, uh, what, snaya, what, no, uh, rati, snaya, mana, uh, pranaya, raga, anuraga, bhava, mahabhava, diruna mahabhava, up to uh, madanaki mahabhava. Haribo, haribo. And then I said, what? You know? And each, each level of love, and then the explanation is like, in the spiritual life is like going through the process of, uh, they give the analogy of uh, sugar, you know? First molasses, and then, and then becomes... Sweet, sweeter, sweetest. 
uh, you know, the way they process the sugar, it's a first molasses and become sugar candy, and then gradually become, it becomes, uh, how do you say, sugar candy? And no, then... sugar candy is the top. It's okay, the right, okay. Yeah. But it's it, it starting from... Uh, 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 it starts it, with, uh, let's say it's a sugar cane juice. Uh, juice, yeah. And then it's cooked down. And then exactly. And yeah. become molasses. It becomes what? like molasses. It's, they call it gur in, in, mm. in uh, India. And then you can refine that. And you keep over-refining it, it becomes white sugar. That's it. Yeah, keep on refining it. So it's like this, it's spiritual. It's, it goes on and it goes on and on and on. And then uh, I like to the thing you mentioned before that we always trying to make everything first class because I w yesterday I was talking to one devotee. So we were talking of how uh, people, I probably also mentioned one lecture how people appreciate this con because when they come to the temple, they look at deities completely different from traditional way of worshiping deities, you know. They, f they were nice, they look they're so beautiful. The deities feature, with, well curved, and uh, the dress, everything, decoration, and people, they like that. Because in the beginning, people, they know, they know uh, completely pure. So they, they appreciate whatever they see directly, or whatever they taste directly, they appreciate it. Whereas for an advanced body, like in India, I've been in some places and villages, you know, when you look at the deities, oh my God, you know, material you think, well, they look so gross, you know, they're not properly, you know, decorated, you know, they're not properly dressed, yet people are worshipping them, you know. But you, uh, have to have, you, have to you be, can yeah. hardly see them in some temples because right. they put them way in the back mm. and the door is really, really, uh, uh, like say, not very wide and it's dark, they don't use lights, they only have candles. Right. You look, and, it's, and then they say, and then they rush you. You know, they have to, you only look for a few seconds, and then they push you. <laughs> That's yeah. in the big temples. Yeah. So all the doors are very uh, not, not wide, right? So if you look from the side, you can hardly see the deity. You have to be right in front to see. Mm. So the presentation is very important, you know, and the way we present things. Yeah, really. it's completely open. Right. And there's nice light. So. That's what uh, people really they, they, they appreciate about ISKCON in India. The you know, when you go to ISKCON temple, everything just nice, bright. <laughs> mm -hmm. The deities are so beautiful. Look how this is look, you know. Because many devotees in the beginning they have a hard time to really relate to the deities. You know, the, even is today nowadays, even uh, present days, some ISKCON devotees they struggle about accepting deities. You know. There was some problem. But anyhow, by making the deities look beautiful, you know, nicely, and uh, having deities nicely curved like our deities, very fine features, everything, and they get dressed nicely, jewelry, everything, it makes people believe, yeah, this is Krishna. <laughs> because it looks so beautiful, so they relate to that, they, yeah, this, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very, very, very nice, you know. What you mentioned earlier on about prasadam should be nice, it should be first class, you know. Yes. And uh, I would, would like to add on things like that. Devotees also, they should be aware about the temple, like even doing kirtan. So I think devotees should start learning basic way to join kirtan. Don't go offbeat. Don't go offbeat, off tune. Yeah. <laughs> We can learn. Proper say we don't have to be expert, but we can get a basic, you know, simple. And this way, when people come to the temple, you know, when people come to the temple, some they're musically inclined. So if you see somebody playing offbeat <laughs> all the time, and this is oh, what's this guy doing? Or, or singing off key? Yeah, thinking well, it's, it's like a joke or something. You know, they don't they don't care about it. They don't know about devotion, right? For an advanced devotee, say, oh, he's doing this. I don't care about, you know, being good by devotion is there. But ordinary people, they don't have the a devotional concept. They just see things, how they sound nicely. <laughs> it's like when we go on Ketan, you know, we're trying to do things really nicely on people. Everything see. should be first class. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. Okay. That's what was uh, my comment. So. Just one uh, more addition, Maharaj, on the food truck, as you has mentioned, uh, as you has mentioned, uh, the first class uh, prasadam and kirtan. So uh, uh, I, every time when I go, there are so many good experiences, every time. But one of the experiences recently I had, uh, I think in the last month, a uh, couple months, one, one month back. So one of the person, uh, he's coming uh, very regularly from the day one. So uh, last month when he came, uh, yeah, on the uh, window, so I greeted him like so and so, Hare Krishna. So, and then immediately he spoke uh, that uh, I was so depressed, as soon as you spoke Hare Krishna, I just got woke up. So when he spoke this, like uh, one, one and a half month back, it's still ringing in my ear. <laughs> that the power of the prasadam and atmosphere and kirtan. And the goodness, the goodness yeah. of the whole thing. So as soon as he spoke, it's just like it's like a wake-up call for me as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, it's um, uh, what is the power of Hare Krishna? I just spoke two words, Hare Krishna, so and so, because every time he's coming from like almost two years, wow. so we know him, and uh, it's amazing experience. Hare Krishna. And also, my few people really like they've been coming there, you know, and the food truck, the prasadam, but then instead of just going to prasadam, they will listen to my mantra. Yes. They listen to my mantra, yes. and the singing, they said, oh, this singing is, is something completely out of this world, the thing like this. I said, actually, it is out of this world, because yeah. it, is <laughs> it is spiritual, it's divine, so it's not material, you know. I would tell them like that, and then I, I, I give them on chanting pamphlet, so go read nicely, you find the meaning behind it. So, and he, these two things mentioned is uh, they are our power, the weapons of Chitanama Prashadam and Kirtan. Yes. So, by all means, we're to try to improve those things. When we yes. give Prashadam and we do Kirtan, it should be something really, uh, how to say, uh, pleasing to people, attractive, you know. We do our best, you know. There's no limit, but we can always improve, you know. Exactly. Hearing and uh, taste, uh, correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. we want their senses to become purified. It doesn't get purified with uh, illicit activities. It's purified with goodness, yeah. transcendental goodness. Uh, that was really great subject, you know. I like that. <laughs> what, you, what you brought today, you know. Huh? The subject you brought today, you know, brought, it was very nice. I, I will think like that. What? I always think like that, yeah. that if you can give nice prasadam to people, 